Hey guys, so here we are back with the router booter. Now you might be watching this video thinking, didn't he just build this? Why are we making another video? Well, basically the moment I put this video out, I was first of all very proud of it. I, I thought that was a really good video of mine, but a lot of you guys immediately disagreed. Now, some of you thought that the project was just stupid. Uh, I don't know why, but you know, I had people suggesting just go buy an enterprise router. I, I think that just doesn't really jive with the whole concept of it kinda works. The kind of soul of this project started because I have a lot of people in my life who call me up when there's a problem with their router or, or network or something. And oftentimes just unplugging it and plugging it back in just does the trick. So I came up with this project and I figured, hey, if it's a problem in my life, it's probably something that a lot of you guys have de had to deal with too. So that's where the idea came from. Not because I needed a better router, I'm perfectly happy with my router, but I know a lot of people who have their own networks, it's not my business to go and tell them go buy an enterprise router, that just that's, doesn't make sense. So that's where this project really came from. Now, aside from some of you guys just pointing out, go get a better router, I also got a lot of feedback uh, saying, you know, why did you build it like this? Uh, I had some people pointing out some parts of it that were potentially dangerous, and I'm going to address that. Uh, and then I had people just pointing out, look, why didn't you just build it with a sun off? Now, I've had you guys commenting about these devices for the better part of a year now saying just get a sun off oh this could be just done with a sun off yes you guys are right you are totally right i could just do this project with a sun off but the thing that i object to about using the sun off not in everyday use but in these videos is that the sun off is just a pre-built little box it's got the, all the power stuff, it's got the ESP, it's got the relay, and that's really cool, and that is totally valid. You guys are totally valid to want to use one of these devices rather than build it yourself. But when I go to make a video, I'm not really thinking about, hey, what's the easiest way to do this? What's the least amount of effort to build this thing? I think, hey, what out there would people want to learn about? You know, yeah, we can just build this project using one of these and it's basically says, hook up AC from this to the socket and upload the code. And that's just, it's boring to me. You, the people, I hope that a lot of you guys watching these videos actually learn something from going and, and seeing how to connect an ESP to a relay or a relay module connect up a power supply, have some filtering capacitors. I hope that that's what you guys find interesting because a long time ago when I was just, you know, a, a kid, I didn't know how to do any of this and it took me a long time to learn how to build something like this. It's not perfect and we're gonna look at some of those flaws today, but it's a really good place for somebody who hasn't done a whole lot of this before to actually learn how to put something like this together because a future project might not be powered off of 120 volt ac they may just want to switch you know a 24 volt line maybe this is for a, a a furnace or something like that so you wouldn't be able to just plug the sun off into the 24 volt ac line so both ways are valid but I think building it more manually and more from the components is more interesting and more educational. Uh, I will note when you're in, if, if something were to happen, some electrical fire, something, this is no better. Okay. This has a little ROHS certificate stamp on it, but there's no UL listing, no ETL, no CSA. This is basically the same as this to any insurance company. So in my mind, I'm going to take the more educational route and learn something myself rather than just go and, and, and take this and, and throw something together for a three-minute video.
with those out of the way, let's actually talk about some of the modifications that should be made to this project to make it a little bit safer, a little bit more professional. Now, the first thing that I wanted to talk about was how I kind of insulated the top and bottom sections, i.e. the high voltage and the lower voltage sections. Before I kind of put it all together, I insulated around the screw terminals on the AC plug. So that just kind of made it so that when I actually put it together, if I took this off, there's not these live AC sockets there. Now, going in a little bit deeper, one of the other safety issues that people brought up was the fact that they thought that the relay there, the bottom of the relay, those contacts, were kind of dangerous just dangling above the ESP sitting in the bottom, especially with its little metal shield there. Uh, even though there was a good chunk of space, you know, there was probably this little tab size here, this little like half inch thing. There's probably that amount of space between them, but because I had, I had adhered the relay via double-sided tape, that could come unstuck and, and fall down. So when I put this together, I did it off camera because it took some time and the video was already getting long, but I did actually insulate the hell out of the bottom of the relay module there. So you can see it's all covered in electrical tape and it's, it's pretty well sealed up there with a few layers, probably three or four layers of electrical tape. Now, beyond that, I actually also put this chunk of cardboard in the bottom that had been surrounded in electrical tape. So between this here and this little board that I had inserted to separate the two layers, I was hoping that that would be enough. So, you know, I, I just wanted to show that because I didn't show it in the video, but this was all there to begin with. And it, it just sort of sits down separating the two layers. So that's sort of the second main concern that a lot of you guys had. The last concern that you guys had was having to do with the screw terminals on my relay here. Now, what I showed in the video was that I tinned the common, the, the wire coming from the wall, and I tinned the wire going to the actual socket here. That is apparently really bad to do and can cause electrical fires and is just really bad Ideally, you would use bare wire with a metal ferrule surrounding it and crimped around the end of that wire. Unfortunately, I don't have any ferrules here, so I'm going to say you should use a ferrule, but in lieu of having a ferrule here with me today, I'm just going to take these out, cut off the tinned part, restrip it, and then I'm just going to do my best to just ever so slightly tin the very tip of it just to hold the tips of those wires together and then just have the rest of that chunk of wire going into the terminal as, as bare stranded wire. It's not ideal, I understand that, but I have read, looked around and read up and it seems that people don't love the idea of just tinning the tip, but that it's generally a lot better than tinning the whole chunk of wire. Hopefully that should alleviate most of your fears around this project and clear up any sort of misconceptions about why I chose to do what I did. All right, so there you go. I'm not sure how well you can see that in the detail shot there. So I did, there's just the smallest little whiff of solder on the tip there. So hopefully that should be all right in the relay socket there. And I've got it on both of the wires. So once again, I know this isn't ideal and I will get a ferrule when I have the chance and put that in. But for now, this should work and should at least be mildly safer than the other way of doing it. So I'm going to get this all buttoned back up and hopefully that's where we can uh, leave the video for today. Uh, thank you guys for watching. 
Once again, I apologize for not being Mr. AC guy, but you know, learning every day. So if you like this video, definitely go and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, go to itkindaworks.com slash forum. And if you're feeling really awesome, want to chip in and help out It Kind of Works, go to patreon.com slash It Kind of Works. All right, guys, I'm going to get this all buttoned up and I will see you all later.